Okay, this how-to video is going to talk about the high-speed analysis coupling workflow that's available inside the Cadence PCB tools. So in my PCB here, I've got a completed board, all the routing's done, and my normal kind of workflow now would be to send the board over to my signal integrity engineer, and he can then run uh, this design in integrity to be able to do some, some analysis of my designs and my routes, just to make sure I'm not going to get any high-speed issues going forward. The advantage of having uh, the Cadence PCB tools is that um, I can actually now do this or some of this uh, certainly inside of the Cadence PCB tools using uh, some of the SIGLD technology. If we look under the, the Analyze menu, we've got something called Workflow Manager. Workflow Manager gives us this docked pane, so we can obviously go and uh, undock it, take it to other, other parts of the screen. We can take it off screen onto a different second monitor if you wanted to, to maximize our workspace. Um, we've got a couple of options. We've got an impedance workflow and a coupling workflow. Uh, there is another video showing you the impedance workflow, so I'm just going to cover the coupling workflow here. Um, I can then need to go and choose what nets I want to, to do the analysis on. So I can either do this based on a, a directed group. So just to give you an example, if I select the directed groups option, what this does is allow you to pick a key component or components, and you, or key components, sorry, um, and you choose that one component, and then it, you then get the choice to choose other components that are connected to that. And it's going to show you all the components that, that you can do that, and you can then go and pick. You see it get highlighted here, so if I then went and cho chose uh, U2, it would then show me the connections between U1 and U2 and give me a list, and I can then go and create a, uh, a directed group. In this example, though, I'm actually just going to do a, a net-based one, so we'll go to net-based and we'll do select nets. I then get a full list of all my, my nets, and I can then uh, put a filter in to just try and filter these. So I just want the data one bus. Uh, all I'm really interested in effectively is the VD0 to VD7 nets. So we'll just move those across. We'll click OK. That effectively makes the next that it's going to go and run the, the analysis on. The analysis options give me things to, to check things like the, the or adjust the values for coupling and rise time. Um, the only one I'm going to really adjust is the geo window, which is effectively the size of the window that looks around each each C line or each track to effectively uh, what it's calculating for coupling. So we'll click OK to that, uh, and then I'm going to start the analysis. Once my analysis is complete, I then get the option to look at the coupling table and the coupling vision. So let's look at the uh, the coupling vision first. So you can see it actually colours uh, my nets that I chose to be uh, selected based on a, a percentage coefficient. So I can zoom in, I can hover over the net that I'm interested in, and I'll then get obviously the coloration based on the, the percentage of coefficient. But I can also see uh, from the tooltip, the tooltip gives me the maximum aggressor net, the maximum couple coefficient, um, the maximum couple length and, and I can I can get an analysis based on all this information. If I want more detail I can look at the coupling table which is again it becomes as this docked window at the bottom so let's just maximize this as a working area. You can then kind of drag this up. We'll see a list of all the nets that we're interested in. When we choose the nets we can effectively pick the net that we're interested in. That then shows us the individual segments and if we can then double click and it would zoom and center to those locations. So in this example here you can see effectively if I look at um, I've got VD7 there and VD6 is the biggest aggressor. If I hover over VD6, you can actually see VD6 is routed on a, on a different layer but directly on top. So I might want to adjust the routing of uh, effectively VD6 to sort, to sort this issue out and stop me having these kind of coupling issues. Saves me having to go to the signal integrity engineer. I can do all of these uh, without having to have that in my workflow. 